I have sinned. These three words are so powerful because when they are directed towards God, an immovable object is whisked away. When we sin, we are chained to those sins. But as Christians, we pray to God and he can take them away. Now, I don't know <clears throat> what happened at what point in time in the church where it became normal that we don't confess our sins to one another. In Scripture, we read in James chapter 5, verse 16, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Now, Scripture tells us to confess our sins to one another. But a lot of times we don't. Well, we might have the attitude, well, my sin is between myself and God. I don't need anybody to help me with that. I can pray to God directly. However, we read in James chapter 5, and we're going to back up a little bit. James chapter 5, verse 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power in, as it is working. Now, you might disagree with me, but I think in the, the culture of the church, this is not something that we practice. We don't necessarily confess our sins to one another on a regular basis. When I was, a few years ago, I had an opportunity to worship in a congregation for a couple of years outside of the United States. So I got to experience a different culture. And, which I really loved, by the way. I really loved being able to experience a different culture. And <clears throat> when we first started, we had about eight people to give you some background. And by the time I left, maybe we had about 25. So a small congregation. And without fail, at least one or two people, every single service, would come forward during the invitation and ask for forgiveness. Now, there was a couple of times where we had four or five people. Granted, we had 12 people in the building. So we're talking 40% of the congregation would come forward and confess their sins. And that was the common practice of the congregation. Everyone was very open. I have these struggles. I have these doubts. I have this sin. I sinned against my brother and sister, and I want them to forgive me. It was a very open about confession. Now, I realize that during the invitation is not the only time when we can confess our sins to one another. And maybe you don't feel comfortable confessing to 100 people or 150 people. But can we confess to one person? Someone that we trust, hopefully someone we trust, someone that's going to give us good advice. Well, the Bible tells us to confess our sins to one another. Why? Why, why not just to God? Well, he mentions here so that we may be healed. Because when we sin, it's because something is broken. Something inside of us is broken. It's not working properly. In Psalm 51, when David offered this psalm of, of mourning, of forgiveness, of, his, <clears throat> of repentance, of his sin with Bathsheba, he mentions three times being broken, having broken bones, having a broken spirit, and having a broken heart. See, when we sin, we become broken, and we sin because we are broken. Now, we read in the book of James, in James chapter 1, in verse 14, that these desires are inside of us. And when we, we give in to these desires, it gives birth to sin. It leads us, it leads us into sin. Now, when we ask for forgiveness, we say, well, I re I re I'm going to my sins, I'm going to ask for forgiveness, and we, we're forgiven by God. 
But we got to get to the root of the problem, what is actually broken. Now, what's on, what's on my mind is uh, that I think is a great struggle in, in the church is, is pornography because it's a, it's a silent sin. It's a, secret, excuse me, it's a secret sin that no one could else could know about. So that is a sin that is not public, but that so many people struggle with. Excuse, I'm not talking about that one-off sin that you say, well, normally I'm a well-mannered person, but I got really mad one day and I, and I, I lost my temper and I asked God to forgive me. See, I'm not talking about that sin. I'm talking about the sin that everyone in here struggles with. It's different for every person, but everyone has a sin that we struggle with, but we kind of pretend like we don't. That, unfortunately, is the culture that we live in. We've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Well, some sins are an addiction. They're a problem. We need to reach out. In other words, we need an accountability partner. We need somebody that we could talk to and say, hey, I'm struggling with this sin, and I, I need help. I need to talk to you about it. I need you to listen to me. May, maybe there's advice that needs to be given. But God says, confess your sins to one another so you may be healed. That's the goal, is to get over this sin that's, that's stuck to us, that we can't get rid of it. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 and 12, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. God understands that we need help overcoming certain sins. Some sins we can ask forgiveness and we do better the next time. Other sins we can't. We need to confess it to someone that we trust. We need help. We need an accountability partner. Now, like I mentioned, if, if it's pornography, and I know Jonathan's doing... Uh, Workshops, I guess you can call it with that. So that's something you can go to. But there are, there are many things. There's apps such as an app called Accountable to You, or you can download it on your phone and your computer, and you can give it to someone else. And if you're viewing something you're not supposed to, it will send them an email, and they can call you and you can talk about it. We live in this age of technology. We have the solutions, but we have to be proactive about it, and we can't pretend that we don't have a problem, that we don't have that we don't need help because we need help. Another thing is that we need someone to sympathize with us. We need someone to know, we need, someone, we need to know that someone cares about us, that they're there for us. We're out here being crushed, absolutely crushed by sin, and we're suffering in silence. Is that what God wants? Us just to just be, suffer every day through sin, just keep it to ourselves? Because, well, I don't, I don't want to cause anyone else grief. No, that's our pride talking. We're not causing anybody grief by reaching out to them and, off, and asking for help. Real quickly, I had a friend in the church, and while I was preaching, when I was starting out as a young preacher, we'd have our conversations, and he had a lot of struggles, and we'd talk about it, and he struggled with coming to worship. He, he had a lot of different struggles, and he, he mentioned to me one time that he just felt like he didn't fit in with the congregation. And I was kind of, I pushed back a little bit. I said, really? I feel like you have a, we have a lot in common. There's a lot of people kind of in the same age group. He said, you don't understand. I'm a really sinful person. I got a lot of problems. And I feel like where you go, where we worship, everyone has their lives together, and they don't have the same struggles that I deal with. Now, he sincerely felt that way. And I tried to explain to him, which at the time I don't think I did a very good job, that, you know, we all have sin, we all struggle, but realize I've never shared any of my struggles with him. You expect people to open up to you, but we don't open up to other people. And sometimes when we pretend that everything's fine, there could be someone struggling that feels like, well, no one else is struggling, I'm the only one. Pretending we don't have struggles with temptation helps no one, not ourselves, not our brothers and sisters in Christ. We all need help. Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another 
that you may be healed. Another thing, I know many of us have close friends in the church, and we talk about everything. We talk about everything except one thing, huh? The sin that we're struggling with. If someone is really your friend, your close friend, and when you don't talk about your struggles, your sins, how can you really say that you're close friends? You know everything except the one thing they need to know. We need healing of our sins, and it starts with changing the culture of the congregation. Now, I understand changing culture is hard. Because it's there, and this, this is how the way it is. You can't change it. Wrong. Changing a culture starts with one person. It starts with us. So you know, I am going to open up. I'm going to share, and then other people will do the same. Now, just real quick, I have no idea how long I've been talking. Sorry, sorry Jonathan. I'm almost done, though. The message to the one receiving the confession, right? Real quickly. Galatians 6, verse 1. Brothers, if anyone has caught any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. We receive the person with gentleness, understanding that we have sin. It shouldn't have to be said, but we don't gossip. When someone tells us in confidence, we can go tell someone else. And there might come a situation where something they say or they have a problem with, you think it's a bigger problem that you can deal with. You ask for permission to go talk with somebody else. We're looking for solutions to these problems. You may not have the solution. In closing, in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 and 10, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word, his word is not in us. As I mentioned, changing the culture of the church is hard. But it starts with one person. And if you're willing to change, others are willing to change with you. Confess your sins to one another. Thank you.